So with this video, I'd like to go over some of the um, fundamentals of doing uh, metathesis reactions. And um, this video uh, will go along with the worksheet that's posted on Blackboard. So uh, take a look at the worksheet. Um, definitely have a look at the, uh, the, the notes on how to use this worksheet. It is a good idea to review tables 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 before you get started. Um, that way you kind of know what's going on uh, in terms of the information that you need in order to do the metathesis reactions. And on this I also have a flow chart that we're going to follow um, for how to approach the metathesis reaction. So uh, this kind of gives you a workable stepwise um, sort of set of, of things to do when you're approaching metathesis reactions. So what you'll notice with most of the directions for these, um, it'll ask you uh, if two aqueous solutions are combined, uh, predict the products and uh, write a balanced molecular and net ionic equation. And then it'll say if no reaction occurs, write no reaction. So for the first example, um, we have iron 2 sulfate. So uh, we have to remember that iron is uh, Fe and sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So um, we're going to put Fe SO4. And um, in this case, it's iron 2 and the sulfate is a 2 minus. So it's just Fe SO4 because Fe is 2 plus and SO4 is 2 minus. Uh, this is aqueous, it tells us that. Uh, and then we have sodium chloride, so that's NaCl aqueous. Um, and now we have to predict the product. So uh, following our steps, we're going to exchange the partners. Uh, so to do that, we're going to get FeCl. Uh, and again, because this is Fe2 plus, um, it's going to be FeCl2. And then um, we're also going to have um, our sodium sulfate, um, NaSO4, and because sulfate is 2 minus, this is going to be Na2SO4. So now we're going to consult our knowledge of the solubility rules. Um, FeCl2, all chlorides are soluble except for the exceptions in the table. So in this case, iron is not an exception, so that's going to get aqueous. Um, and then Na2SO4, that's also going to get an aqueous because sulfates are soluble um, except for the exceptions listed in the table, and sodium sulfate is not one of the exceptions. So in this case, because FeCl2 and Na2SO4 are both soluble, um, and it's, we're not observing a precipitation reaction, an acid-base reaction, or a gas-forming reaction, we can write for the net ionic no reaction. Now, just so that you know, you do have to balance these things. So um, for this one, um, you would just put a 2 in front of the NaCl um, because uh, you would need 2Na two two uh, two on the, the one side and 2Cl2 two on the, the other. So, um, so that would be the molecular equation, but since there's no reaction, we just write no reaction. Um, let's take a look at the second example. So we have sodium carbonate. That's going to be Na and then CO3. We have to remember that CO3 is 2 minus, so that's going to be Na2CO3 aqueous. Plus magnesium bromide, so that's going to be Mg for magnesium. Bromide is going to be Br. Um, magnesium is an alkali earth metal. It's in the second row. So that's going to be MgBr2 because magnesium is a plus 2. Now we're going to do our, uh, our partner exchange. So we're going to do MgCO3. And this actually works because magnesium is 2 plus and CO3 is uh, 2 minus. So there, that's good that way. And then we're going to have Na and Br. And um, both of those have a, a plus 1 and a minus 1 charge respectively. Um, just from solubility rules, we know that sodium bromide is soluble because um, the, the halides, uh, sodium halides should be soluble, so that's going to get an aqueous. Now the carbonate, um, most carbonates are insoluble, and magnesium is, is one of those cases. I think only ammonium carbonate is the only soluble one. So this is definitely going to be a solid. So we have our first precipitation reaction. So um, by identifying that from, the, um, from our solubility rules, we know. Now, when you write a net ionic, you can do the complete ionic um, if you feel you need to, meaning you can write out all the different ions and then cancel. Uh, the way I like to do it, though, and I think the, the bit faster way is to realize that the spectator ions are going to be the Na and the Br. Um, so when we're setting up the, um, the net ionic, um, we can eliminate the Na and the Br because they're soluble on both the reactant and product side. So before we get there, though, we just want to make sure everything is balanced. So here we have Na2 and Br2. So over here we have to put a 2 just to make sure we get the molecular reaction balanced. And then we're going to have our um, CO3 2- aqueous 
plus our Mg2 plus aqueous. These are the two ions that are built up inside of the magnesium carbonate. And um, we're going to then write over here magnesium carbonate solid. And um, just keeping in mind that the bromine and the sodium are both uh, soluble on both sides. So uh, they won't appear in the, in the net ionic. Um, so for the lead nitrate and the ammonium phosphate, first we have to identify what those are. So uh, lead 2 is going to be Pb, and then we have nitrate is NO3. And in this case, um, NO3 is a 1 minus, so we need two of those, and that's going to be aqueous. Plus ammonium phosphate. So we have to remember what ammonium is, that's NH4. Um, and then we have to remember what phosphate is, that's PO4. Um, PO4 is a 3 minus, so this is going to be NH43 PO4, and that's going to be an aqueous. And then we're going to do our exchange. So on the other side, we're going to have PB um, and then PO4. Now this one's a little tough. We have to do our crisscross method. We know PO4 is a 3 minus, so it's going to be PB3, PO4, 2. That's because PB is a 2 plus and PO4 is a 3 minus. So when you crisscross, it's going to be PB3, PO4, 2. And then our other guy is going to be the ammonium nitrate, which is the NH4, NO3. Um, from solubility rules, most um, ammonium compounds and most nitrate compounds are soluble. So ammonium nitrate is definitely soluble. That's going to get an aqueous. Uh, and then we have lead phosphate. So uh, lead phosphate is going to be a solid. Um, most phosphates are insoluble, uh, including lead. So that's going to be a solid. And then we have to balance. Um, so we have to make sure that everything is balanced here. So now uh, we have three leads on the right. So we're going to put a three over here. And we have uh, two phosphates on the right. So we're going to put a two here. That's going to give us a total of six ammonium nitrate. So now that everything is balanced, we can work on our net ionic. Um, so three Pb2 plus uh, aqueous plus uh, two PO4 three minus aqueous is going to give us our Pb3 PO4 two solid, our lead phosphate solid. Um, so now let's take a look and move into some neutralization reactions or some acid base reactions. Um, so we have acetyl salicylic acid, um, which is aspirin. Uh, and potassium hydroxide. So we, in this case, I gave you the acetyl salicylic acid structure. Um, we may or may not. This is one of the things in the tables on the exam. But here I give it to you so that, you know, you don't have to, to worry about memorizing it right off the bat. But you should know these generally, especially the acetate. Um, that's one that you should definitely know. I think for the more complex ones, those ones generally we might give you on the exam. But theoretically, you should know them all. Um, so in this case, you'll notice that it's written kind of funny. Um, there's an H that's hanging right there. Um, and that's specifically written that way because that tells you which one is the acidic proton. So um, when we are going to react this and neutralize it, that's the proton we're going to take. Uh, and then we have potassium hydroxide. So we're going to write down our, for our molecular, we have HC9H7O4 aqueous um, plus uh, potassium hydroxide is KOH aqueous. Um, and then on the other side, we're going to do our exchange. So we're going to have um, K. Now we have to take the um, anion portion of this, which is going to be the C9H7O4. K, C9H7O4 um, plus uh, we're going to have our um, OH and our H. So that's going to be uh, H2O liquid. Um, so now H2O will always be a liquid, so uh, we know that. So our KC9H7O4, this is going to be uh, aqueous. Um, generally speaking, the salt of an acid will be, uh, will be soluble. Um, there, um, for all of the molecular acids that we present in, the, in that table, um, those are all going to be soluble, so uh, you should know that. Um, and then when it comes to the net ionic, uh, we have we're going to have our um, 
our strong base plus uh, weak acid in this case. So we should know in this case that uh, HC9H7O4, this is not an example of a strong acid. So when we write the complete ionic equation, we're going to have HC9H7O4 aqueous. That doesn't break up in the complete because um, strong ac only strong acids break up totally in the complete. Weak acids, they only partially ionize. So they, that stays together for the complete. Um, and then we're going to have our K plus aqueous plus our OH minus aqueous. Now the reason why we break that up is because KOH is a strong base. Now on the other side, we're going to have our K plus aqueous. Um, our C9H7O4 minus ion aqueous. Um, this this KC9H7O4, that's the salt, and then we make water in a neutralization reaction, plus our H2O liquid. So what we were going to wind up getting rid of in this case is our K plus HC9H7O4 aqueous plus our OH minus aqueous is going to give our C9H7O4 minus aqueous plus H2O liquid. So this is a good example of a weak acid with a strong base. And you'll notice that the main thing to walk away from here is the reason why you have to know the difference between a weak acid and uh, a strong acid and a base and a weak acid and, uh, and a weak base, for example, is because you have to know what's going to break up in the complete and what's not. So uh, in this case, because it's a weak, it doesn't break up. Now let's look at example five. This one, just looking at it, uh, is perchloric acid and barium hydroxide. This is a strong acid. Perchloric acid is uh, HClO4 aqueous, that we know from the table, and barium hydroxide, that's BaOH2 aqueous. These are both examples of it. This is these are both examples of a strong acid and a strong base. So in this case, our net ionic is going to look a little different. Um, so we're going to do our exchange. Um, we're going to have um, our uh, H2O liquid. Um, that's going to come from the H from our HClO4, the acidic proton, and the OH uh, and the OH from the other side. So we're going to have H2O liquid, and then in this case, we're going to have barium and we're gonna have ClO4 um, on the other side. Now, because barium is a two plus and ClO4 uh, minus is just a one minus, that's gonna be a two there. To balance everything out, we're gonna need two of those HClO4s. Uh, that makes everything work. And we're also gonna get two H2O. So uh, just make sure you balance everything. In the previous example, I, I didn't balance it because it was already balanced, but... Um, this one is one where you do have to be cognizant of the balancing. Now for the complete ionic equation here, here we are going to break up H plus aqueous plus ClO4 minus aqueous, uh, and we have two of each of those. Um, and the reason why we're breaking those up is because we have, they are strong acids, so we are going to break that up. So then we have our barium 2 plus aqueous, we have our 2 OH minus aqueous, and then on the other side we have our 2 H2O liquid, plus our barium 2 plus aqueous. Uh, barium chlorate is a soluble compound. Um, I'm sorry, barium perchlorate is a soluble compound. And we have our 2ClO4 um, minus aqueous. So uh, now we can start to cancel things out. So uh, we have our 2ClO4, those are gonna cancel. Our barium 2 plus, that's gonna, that's gonna cancel. So in this case, we're left with H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous goes to H2O liquid. Now, some of you might be wondering why I dropped the twos. Well, it's because when you write out an equation, it has to have the lowest coefficients. So the twos in the complete ionic will drop out when you write the net ionic because you wouldn't have two, two, and two. We always reduce it to the, um, we always reduce it to the uh, lowest number of coefficients in, the, in, in, an, in an equation. So now in example six, we're gonna look at, uh, this is gonna be an example of a gas forming reaction. So in example six, uh, we have sodium sulfite, which is Na2SO3 aqueous. Um, remember sulfite is SO3, sulfate is SO4. Uh, and then we have HBr aqueous. 
Now, um, this is one of those things where you have to memorize this. Um, sodium sulfite, um, when you put sulfites in the presence of an acid, these are ones that are going to decompose. Um, and I'm going to show you in just a second why they decompose. But um, when you do your partner exchange here, what you're going to get is um, H2SO3. So I'm going to write that on the side here. One of your products from the partner exchange is going to be H2SO3. Now H2SO3 is going to decompose into SO2 plus H2O, just like carbonate does. So your products in this case are going to be um, your NaBr, aqueous, that's the one. And then your H2SO3 uh, is going to be the other, and that is going to break apart into H2O plus SO2. And SO2 in this case is a gas, and H2O is a liquid. Now to make this balance out, we're going to need two HBr, um, and we're going to make two NaBr on the other side. So um, that should make it all work out in the end, because we need two H's. Um, for the H2O and uh, the SO2 um, balances out over here. Uh, we take one of the oxygens to make the water. So that's what it should look like. And remember, S this is SO2 is an example of one where we form a gas. So when we write our net ionic in this case, this one does help to write a complete ionic. So I'm going to do that. So we have two Na plus aqueous plus SO3 two minus aqueous plus 2H plus aqueous, plus 2Br minus aqueous, goes to 2Na plus aqueous, plus 2Br minus aqueous, plus H2O liquid, plus SO2 gas. And now we can have our canceling. So we have our 2Na plus, they cancel. Um, we have our uh, two Br minus, they're going to cancel. And what does this leave us with? This leaves us with two H plus aqueous plus um, the SO3 two minus aqueous goes to H2O liquid plus SO2 gas. And I'm going to just put a box around that so that everybody can see it. Um, okay, so now let's look at our next one. So we have sodium acetate, uh, which is uh, NaC2H3O2. And again, um, this is one where you should definitely memorize the, the acetic acid acetate. Um, so we have our NaC2H3O2, and we're going to add HCl aqueous to that. Uh, so now the question is, is what do we get for products? So we're going to do our partner exchange. And we're going to get um, our NaCl aqueous plus our HC2H3O2, which is our acetic acid aqueous, okay? So now this is one where people tend to make a mistake. So I'm going to write out the complete below so that we can see. So with the Na plus... Um, we're going to have Na plus aqueous plus C2H3O2 aqueous um, plus H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. So that's our left side. And on the right side, we're going to have Na plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous plus... Now, here's where people make a mistake. Acetic acid is a weak acid, meaning it's a weak electrolyte. So we don't, in the complete ionic equation, write it as being broken up. Um, so in this case, we're going to leave it as HC2H3O2. So your tendency might be to write that there's no reaction. But in reality, there is, because we're going from four ions on the left to only really two ions on the right, because HC2H3O2 only breaks up to a very small fraction in solution. So in this case, um, because acetic acid is a weak acid, our final answer uh, is going to be, so the Na plus and the Cl minus are going to go away, is that it's going to be H plus aqueous plus C2H3O2 minus aqueous 
gives H C two H three O two aqueous. And this is a metathesis reaction because we are forming a um, we are forming a weak electrolyte. We are taking ions out of solution. Um, so that that's definitely one to uh, to think about. Now, in example eight, this is a case where we don't have a reaction. So, um, unlike in example seven, where we form a weak electrolyte, because um, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid are both strong acids, you'll see that everything is going to drop out um, from the molecular. So hydrochloric acid is HCl aqueous, and so uh, H2SO4 is, uh, sulfuric acid is H2SO4 aqueous. So when we do our exchange here, what we're going to see is that we have, um, again, over here, H2SO4, because we have a strong acid, and we're going to have HCl, which is a strong acid. Uh, aqueous when you swap them because essentially strong, they're, we're just mixing two strong acids together. So everything is going to drop out in this case and um, essentially what we're going to have is no reaction. So in the above case, that's where we're dealing with a weak electrolyte. We're mixing an acid with a weak base to form a weak electrolyte. In the bottom case, we're just mixing two acids together. They're both strong, so nothing really um, happens. So the, the, this is a good example of, um, these are some good examples of things you should think about. And we've covered a lot of good things, a lot of ground. Um, in this case, we've looked at the effect of some weak electrolytes in neutralization reactions, and we've looked at uh, the solubility rules. So um, after going through this, uh, you can definitely find many, many more examples of, um, of this kind of thing uh, online. So, you know, keep practicing, do the problems in the back of the textbook, and I, and I think you guys will be good for the exam.